The heavy door creaked on its hinges as he pushed it open. He looked around the carpentry shop. He stood for a moment in the refuge of the little room that housed so many sweet memories. He had come to say goodbye. Life had been peaceful here. Here, life was safe. On this dirt floor, he had played as a toddler as his father worked. Here, Joseph had taught him how to grip a hammer, and it was on this very workbench that he had built his first chair. It was here that his human hands shaped the wood that his divine hands had created, and it was here that his body matured as his spirit waited for the right moment, the right day. And now that day had arrived. It must have been difficult. After all, life as a carpenter hadn't been bad. It wasn't bad at all. Business was good. The future was bright, and his work was enjoyable. In Nazareth, he was known only as Jesus, the son of Joseph. You see, he didn't have to go. He had a choice. He could have stayed. He could have kept his mouth shut. He could have ignored the call or at least postponed it. And if he had chosen to stay, who would have known? Who would have blamed him? He could have come back at a different time when society was not so volatile, when religion wasn't so stale, when people would listen better. He could have come back when crosses were out of style. But his heart wouldn't let him. If there was a hesitation on his part of humanity, it was overcome by the compassion of his divinity. His divinity heard the voices. His divinity heard the hopeless cries of the poor, the bitter accusations of the abandoned, the dangling despair of those trying to save themselves. And his divinity saw the faces, some wrinkled, some weeping, some hidden behind veils, some obscured with fear, some earnest with searching, some blank with boredom. From the faces of Adam to the face of the infant being born somewhere in the world at this very moment, he saw them all. And you can be sure of one thing. Among the voices that found their way into that carpentry shop in Nazareth was your voice. Your silent prayer uttered on tear-stained pillows were heard before they were said. Your deepest questions about death and eternity were answered before they were asked. And your direst need, your need for a Savior was met before you ever sinned. And not only did he hear you, he saw you. He saw your face the hour you first knew him. He saw your face in shame the hour you first fell. The same face that looked at you from this morning's mirror looked at him. And it was enough to kill him. He left because of you. Since he could bear your sins more easily than he could bear the thought of your hopelessness, he chose to leave. He chose you.